Hello and welcome to the MECC's fourth installment of Making Sense of Excel, our combination of personal finance and Excel training. In this video, I'm going to walk you through pay, how to pay off a loan. So we're going to go over some, basic, some loan basics and also look at the economic value of actually making overpayments to your loan so you can pay it off sooner and save in long-term interest costs. All right, as we jump into the model, we're gonna be reviewing a few techniques we've seen in previous videos, as well as seeing some new techniques as well. All right, so if we scroll down, we're gonna see our inputs to this model. So we're gonna have a loan term, in this case, 11 years. Uh, these loans are gonna be paid off monthly, so we'll build that into our model. We'll have a starting balance, in this case, $11,900, an interest rate of 9% here. That's an annual rate, and it's gonna be stated as an APR, meaning to get our monthly rate, we'll divide by 12 to get that monthly rate. And finally, an extra payment amount. To, so we can ask the question, well, what if I overpaid this loan so I pay it off quicker? How would that work? And that's what we're gonna build our model to find out. Notice I also have some math formula off here to the side, the annuity formula. Uh, and this allows us to calculate what's called the present value of an annuity. All right, so annuities are kind of a strange term in finance. One, because you might have heard annuities talked about as a savings vehicle for retirement. Uh, it's something like a pension that will pay you a set amount every month or every year uh, until you die, effectively. So life insurance companies sell these and they brand them as annuities. Uh, however, the more general term of annuity means just a recurring series of the same cash flow. So think about a corporate bond where a, a corporation might pay the same amount of money, $1,000 a month, or sorry, $1,000 a year or maybe twice a year for say 20 years. That kind of recurring constant stream of cash flows we refer to as an annuity. And in this case, the present value of the annuity is the value of those dollars in today's terms. So if you wanted to calculate, you could use this formula here. We've laid out all the parameters and I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit more simply in Excel. All right, so let's scroll down a bit to our model and start out with our first question. So the first thing in building this model is we have to know how many periods we're gonna deal with, in this case, months. So in this case, if we make the minimum monthly payments, how many pay payments do we make until we pay off our loan? Well, that's just how many months we have. So in this case, we have 11 years. We know there are 12 months in the year. So 132 months, and we're off to a good start. All right, I already explained what an APR is, but here the idea again is to take our annual interest rate and then convert it to monthly by dividing by 12. So we see we're paying 75 basis points or 0.75% per month to borrow that money for whatever it is we use this money to buy. All right, so now the next question is, how much do you have to pay each month to pay this off by the end of the term? So what are our even monthly payments? If We pay the same amount. So we're gonna have one payment that never changes through time. That's the idea of an annuity. Uh, and it's going to have different combinations of principal and interest in it, which we'll see in our model. Now, to do this, we can actually take this present value function and rearrange it to solve for P, or the periodic payment amount. So we could do that by basically dividing this big term over here by both sides, by, divide both sides by that big term, and we'll have P equals PV over this whole thing. Alternatively, and if you're in Excel, we can use the payment function. All right, so one, it's good to know this math formula so you can rearrange it if you need to, but two, using the payment function can actually be better because you're less likely to make mistakes. Um, a lot of times when you type in these complicated formulas, it's easy to miss a parentheses or any number of other errors. So it's always nice to have a built-in function that's easier to use. So in this case, we're gonna look at what it asks for. So the first thing the payment function asks for is the rate. Well, we already calculated that. We wanna make sure we use our monthly rate our in per or number of periods. So we have 132 periods, again, sticking monthly. And then the present value. Well, the present value is the amount we borrowed. So let's go ahead and just reference our starting loan balance and hit enter. And here, if we check our answers, we see that we got the third question wrong. But if we look a little closer, we see that we got the right answer. It's just negative. And this is just how the function's built. So if we start with a positive present value, well, to pay that off, you'd have to make negative amounts of payments. So whoever got this 11,900, that means they need to pay out or give away that negative $142 a month. 
So put differently, if we want a positive value here, we can either put a negative in front of our present value. That's one way. Or alternatively, you could put a negative in front of the whole thing. Either way works. It's just whatever you're comfortable with here. All right, let's verify we got our answer right. Let's even reset the parameters and we see we're still correct. All right, so now if we make our minimum monthly payments, what is the loan balance at the end of one year? That's gonna be really hard to project without a model. So let's scroll down a bit here and let's start building our models. So let's start with our months and just like in our previous balance video, we're gonna lay out what we're gonna do in each column. So we're gonna to need to track our beginning balance, our interest, our payment, and our ending balance. So we'll need all those. For our months, it says in the model that we can only go up to 30 years. So let's use a sequence with 30 times 12. So we can allow for up to 30 years in our model. We're not necessarily always gonna use them all. Now our beginning balance, in the previous model, we saw it started at zero because we were accumulating over time. In this case, we're paying off. And so let's start with our loan balance of 10,100 in this example. And now we can start calculating our other pieces. So our interest cost, well, that's just gonna be the beginning balance, whatever we owe times our interest rate. We already calculated the monthly rate right there. So let's lock that in. F4 again locks that for us. Our payment, we also already calculated that. So let's build our payment in. And then our ending balance now, it's our beginning balance plus any interest that we owe. So that interest increases our balance. And that's why we need to make our payments to make sure we counteract it. And then we subtract our payment. So our account balance starts where it is, it increases with interest, and then decreases with the payment that we make. So in this case, you see we started out and we owed 10,100. By the end of the first month, we owed 10,031. So we're making progress. Now we're gonna link our starting balance to our ending balance, copy those formulas down. And I'm gonna copy that whole row and control down arrow, control shift right arrow a couple times and then control shift up and then control V to paste. And we see some errors down here and we're gonna dig into this in just a minute, but let's check our answers first. All right, so now we see that after one year, so 12 months, we have a balance of $9,261. So let's go ahead and build that link here. I'm just gonna to link to our model and verify our answers. We see we got our answer correct. Now the next question asks, if you make minimum monthly payments, what percentage of the first year's payments go to interest? All right, that's an interesting thing to know. So let's just go ahead and add up our interest for the first 12 months, divide by our total payments for the first 12 months, and we see 32% of our payments went to paying interest. Now, this is gonna vary depending on the term of the loans and the interest rate. So if we reset our parameters, we have a similar loan term, it's a little bit longer, 12 years, but a much higher interest rate, at which point we now owe 64% of our payments are going to interest. So the interest rate's gonna have a big effect on that, and if we move around a little bit, you can see 73% here, because it's a longer term. We, let's see if we can find a high interest rate in the long term. So there's a 30-year term with a 10% interest rate, and now 95% of our payments are going to satisfy interest and very little is going to principal. So the longer your term and the higher your rate, the more is going to satisfy the interest payments. All right, so that all said, let's look at our next question. Now, if we add the extra payment amount to the minimum monthly payment, what's the loan and balance at the end of one year? So since we're changing the scenario now, we're gonna to wanna to create a copy of the model. Before we do that, we'd like our model to be entirely correct which means not having a big negative balance at the end. And notice we have a zero balance at the end here. That's because it's a 30 year loan. It's the maximum we can have in our model. The zero is negative. What that's showing is that it's actually slightly less than zero and that's just a precision kind of rounding error in Excel. That said, let's move back here so we get a, a shorter term so we can see our error so we can fix it. All right, so now we have an 11 year term, which means by the end of 30 years, if we kept making our payments, we would have a balance of negative $85,000. So I don't know about you, but when I stop owing on a loan, I'm gonna stop paying it. So that's what we need to do in our model is we need to figure out a way, we scroll up when this thing hits zero, right? We stop making these payments now. And now uh, kind of the first bit of intuition for most people 
is to use an if statement, right? We can say if, you know, 133, the, the month we're in, is less than our parameter that we started with, 132, right, 11 times 12, then don't make payments anymore, right? Which is a nice way to think about it. And let's go ahead and build that for now, and I'm gonna show you why there's actually gonna be a better way to do it. So let's build it here. Let's go ahead and say, if the months is less than or equal to the value we calculated, then give me a payment, otherwise give me zero. All right, so let's copy that down, just double click on that, and let's see what happens after 11 years. We see our zero payment, and our balance stays at zero. So it looks like it's working pretty well. All right, now let's copy that over. Just we're gonna create a duplicate of the model. We're gonna make any corrections we need to. Sometimes when you move it, things break, which did in this case, right? Our beginning balance shouldn't be zero way over here. Let's pull that back to our $14,000 value there. All right, so now we've got our model. If we go to the bottom, it looks like it's working. And now we can make our adaptation. In this case, the adaptation is to change the payment amount to incorporate not just the minimum payment, but also any extra payment amount that we choose to use. So I'm gonna lock that in, and now we're gonna copy this down. All right, let's see what happens now. If we scroll down, we see that we overpay the loan again. Why did we overpay the loan? Well, we kept making payments all the way until the end of month 132, right? At that point, we stopped making payments, but not before we built up a big negative balance. All right, why did we do that? Well, because we built the model just to stop after the 11 years it ended up. Instead, we can think about doing this in a slightly different way. All right, and now instead of using an if statement, we're gonna think about using a minimum statement. So let's get rid of our if, and we're gonna say min. All right, so the minimum function is gonna take the minimum of all the values you give it. So you can give it lots of different values. Typically, it's just two or three. So in this case, one value is our minimum payment plus the additional amount, right? It's the payment that we want to make. And we want to compare that to the amount we owe on the loan, All right? So the amount we owe on the loan is the beginning balance plus any interest that's accumulated so far. So each month, we're going to compare how much do I owe to pay off the loan versus what payment do I want to make, all right? So at the beginning, you know, we owe $14,093, but the payment we want to make is much less than that. So we're going to use the smaller item or the minimum, which is going to be the $279.82. Then as we get closer and closer to paying this thing off, we can scroll down, whoop, we went right by it. Here we see that we owe $20.12, right? Our beginning principal plus the interest for that period. And so that's all we need to pay to pay off this loan which then conveniently makes our model go to zero, and then it stays at zero forever after. So this min function way of doing it is a much more flexible way to model this problem. All right, and it's gonna allow us to now take this model and fill out the rest of our answers. So here, if we add the minimum payment amount, what's our balance after 12 months? So let's go get it. We see that we have a substantially less balance, right? 13,172 versus 11,678, almost over $1,000 less because we're making those extra monthly payments. All right, make sure we're good, we look good. Now the question is, how much of, the, of our payments went to interest in this new scenario? Well, let's go ahead and copy our previous formula, All right? Sometimes it's good to copy past formulas even when we have to adapt them. In this case, I'm gonna adapt it by just dragging these, this red section over to here and the blue section over here. It's actually going to be a little faster than me than I would get from actually typing that formula over again. All right, so we've got that one figured out. Let's verify it. We look good. So three more questions to go. This next one asks, with the extra payment scenario, how long does it take to pay off the loan? So we started out with 132 months. Now we should get 62 months. And let's just visually verify that. If we scroll down, we see we get to zero in month 62. So the model seems to be working. Now we just need to have a way of looking up, when does this 62 happen? When does this first go to zero? So in this case, we can use our XLOOKUP function. All right, we used it before. Here we're gonna look for zero. When does that occur? 
in this ending balance column. All right, so we're gonna look at our ending balance column and we wanna return the month that that occurred. So we get that and we get our 62 right there. All right, two more questions. If we make minimum monthly payments, how much interest do we pay? Well, this will show us kind of the economic value of making those extra principal payments. Because then we're gonna look at how much interest we paid if we made the overpayments. And keep in mind, the principal that we're paying in both scenarios is exactly the same. We start out owing, in this case, our $14,000. And in one case, if we don't make these overpayments, we pay $21,000 in interest. Oh, looks like we actually got that one wrong, the $21,000. Let's go back and see if we can figure out what exactly happened there. So we summed up our payment amount. Let's scroll down. Oh, and we summed up payments instead of interest. So this is where we have to just double check our formulas sometimes. Let's just drag that over to the interest column. Verify our answers one more time. All right, we got our answers correct and we can see we paid $7,000 in interest without the overpayment and $3,000 in interest with the overpayment. So when you can afford to overpay a loan to reduce the balance more quickly, what that does is it effectively just reduces how much interest you're gonna to have to pay. So overpaying loans makes a lot of sense when you can. Um, let's actually see how big the difference is at longer horizons. So in this case, it's a 30 year loan and for $25,000, and you're seeing the difference between $23,000 in interest and almost $8,000 in interest. So really big substantial savings by paying off that balance early when you can. Thank you again for joining me for this installment of the Making Sense of Excel series, where you're getting a little bit of personal finance training, a little bit of Excel training, getting you ready for when you graduate college. Good luck with the rest of the season, and I hope to see you in Las Vegas.